Whoa, this is a good one. Well, good day everyone. So uh, as you can see, wind and weather isn't ideal to be out fishing this morning. So uh, I'm at home and I thought I'd take the chance to run you over my uh, fishing kayak. The one that I use most of the time. I do have another one at Wilderness Systems, but uh, this is the one I use, I guess, 70% of the time. Uh, obviously, Hobie Outback. Great boat. I love this boat, but uh, it's, <laughs> it really is showing a bit of age and, and wear. And I'm going to run you through it and show you a few issues, a few faults. Not manufacturing faults, but... Uh, um, lack of maintenance faults really so my fault and um, I'll show you all the faults and then I'll explain why it's such a good boat despite the faults so bear with me as we have a look at my battered, bruised and completely abused Hobie Outback okay so this is a 2013 model so it's an older one hasn't got the new Vantage seat that's the old style seat which gives everyone uh, kidney complaints and back seizures. Uh, I've owned it for, so that's a seven year old kayak. I've owned it for three years, at a guess. I swapped it for a Hobie Sport that I had be before this, I had previously. And um, I've given it a hell of a lot of use, pretty much every weekend. Sometimes multiple times over the weekend. But let's talk about a few issues that I've had. Firstly, We'll start with the Mirage Drive. Again, my fault for lack of maintenance. I'm not great with maintenance, but the fault I've had on my Mirage Drive, and not just on this Mirage Drive, I've had it on previous Mirage Drives, is the drive chain. I've popped the crimp there. As you can see, that one there is a little bit rusty. And I've popped pretty much every drive chain and had to replace it, which is an easy job undo the screw, take the chain off, put a new one on. But uh, yeah, that's the main problem I've had with Mirage Drive. And it's an old Mirage Drive, like I said, seven years old now. It's had a lot of use. The other issue I've had is uh, the nut on the pedal, inside the pedal that keeps the pedal from sliding off this way. It's, um, the lock nut's just old and worn out, the nylon in it's pretty much had its day so occasionally that pedal will just pop off and I have to fix it out on the water I actually carry a, a socket out with me in my fishing kit just to fix that when it pops off so I know I'm treating the symptom and not the the cause of the problem but oh well like I said I'm lazy with maintenance okay let's go to the back of the boat Another issue I've been having, and I need to purchase a new rudder fin. I'll just drop that rudder down, actually. So, another issue I've been having is this rudder pin. Just with the age of it, it's a bit worn out. I've already replaced it once. But every now and again, that'll just work itself loose, especially in a bit of, if I've got a bit of side chop and the, and the rudder's doing that. The pin will work up and I'll, left, I'll be left with the rudder just flopping around and there's been a couple of times I've been out on the water and had to sort of lean all the way back here from the seat which is no easy task and put the rudder pin back on a um, bit precarious when you're out on the water to be quite honest a couple of times I thought yeah I'm going to end up swimming here in a minute but uh, yeah that's a job I've got to do I've got to buy myself a new rudder pin replace that the lines are probably getting close to replacement as well and like I said these aren't manufacturers faults these are just um, age of the kayak these things happen um, with the new Habies you do get a rudder pin here that's actually the one that I broke I don't know why I bothered keeping it but you'll have a new rudder pin stored there so you can replace it which is what I did there but uh, yeah, 
another issue that I have with this yak. You can see the seal on the on the rear hatch here is perfect. Nice and loose. You go to the center hatch here, the one I use a lot, and that's getting pretty stiff. I've actually recently um, cleaned that and uh, lubricated that with silicon spray, but it's still pretty tight. But like I said, I mean, it's, it's on the water every weekend, salt spray, that's not bad. Another issue I did have out on the water as well was uh, the, the nut that locks the tiller in place came off and the tiller, I was cruising along and the tiller actually came off in my hand, which made for an interesting cruise home. Uh, but that again, that was just a bit of Loctite, get it back on there, good as gold. That was probably 18 months ago, still going strong. Over on the other side here, this handle, I actually broke that handle clean off when I went to pick it up one day. So what I've done is I, I took the handle off and I've got a rod inside the handle, that's hollow, so I've put a rod inside there and glued the plastic back together. So far so good still works now the seat I've had to replace the strap on this side of the seat that just became frayed and worn so I just that's an old uh, dog lead I think I just stuck that on there works a treat and uh, speaking of dogs she had a bit of a chew at the seat I'm lucky she didn't go further actually but uh, oh well, I'll replace the seat one day that's not the biggest of deals when I go out, I generally put a towel over there anyway, just for a little bit extra padding. So I'm not usually worried about the seat. And I'm, I've never used a Vantage seat on the newer ones, but I've heard because they sit a little higher, it's uh, make, it can cause the kayak to be slightly tippy. Just what I've heard. I have no experience with it. But uh, as far as stability goes, you sit nice and low in this kayak. No problem at all. Alright, let's pop the front hatch here. This is my uh, pretty messy attempt at installing a, um, a sounder. So what I've done is I've got the sounder mounted here. And it's, instead of going straight through the hull here, I've just moved it up forward. And that was mainly to, to uh, avoid lines here underneath. So I've moved it forward. A bit of flexible hose just goes in there and then the lines come out here to the battery box and uh, the battery just sits in there I've got to replace these clips because it's getting pretty common that I'll be out on the water and the sounder will just shut off due to uh, failed power supply so these clips I've got to replace I'm gonna do that today actually uh, while the weather isn't so great and um, that should solve that issue uh, well I've got the hatch open the seal's starting to come adrift, so I've got to re reattach that. It's, um, yeah, showing its age, unfortunately. These things happen. Uh, this, the reason I've got a sawn off fishing rod handle here is um, I use, firstly, I use it as a, a camera mount, but secondly, if I ever capsize, this gives me a a pretty handy, uh, pretty handy point to hold onto and drag myself back into the kayak. And instead of coming over the side, what I would do is I'd pull myself forward like I was getting onto a surfboard, pull myself into the yak that way, move up to the seat, no problem. Just makes it so much easier. Okay, so there's the faults. And I said I'd explain why it's such a good kayak after I've described the faults, and here's why. Despite all those faults, despite the fact that it's a, an aging kayak, and it's got, you know, it's pretty rough. Look at it, it's filthy. There's dense scratches. I'll show, you, show you the base, actually. The base is pretty rough, where I've just dragged it over, you know, sand, rocks. It gets a bit of a hammer in this shack, dragged on and off the top of my yoke. And it's still a fantastic fishing kayak. Extremely stable. Um, in my opinion, this is the best fishing kayak for applications such as uh, squidding, where you want to move nice and slowly and just keep that jig 
Twitch and I, this is the best squidding kayak you could get easily, in my humble opinion. Trolling, you just set up your rods here, either side, start kicking. You can literally sit there, and I often do, sit there drinking a coffee, waiting for a fish to uh, jump on the hook, which happens pretty regularly. One thing I I was very lucky with this is, um, I, I, as I said earlier in the video, I swapped it for a Hobie Sport. I actually bought the Hobie Sport very cheaply and um, then swapped it for this. So without giving away the exact price, it was under $1,000. That's what it cost me to get this, um, this Hobie Outback. And you look online these days and um, down and you should get something like this for Oh, 1500 maybe even 1200 bucks I was very lucky a little bit of wheeling and dealing and yeah ended up with this ripper uh, so I've spoken a bit about stability it's just an extremely stable kayak so you sit low in it it's wide it's um well designed importantly uh, you often see wide kayaks that aren't quite so well designed and they roll around like anyone's business this is a really well designed kayak with a lot of uh, research and development behind it so stability number one number two reliability uh, you know you're going to get uh, good quality when you buy a, buy a Hobie and they're going to last uh, that's not to say they don't have problems um, a lot of issues happen cracking in the, the drive well here cracking um, at the rudder point, you know, you can find faults with Hobies, but generally speaking, they're a very good boat. You know, if you, you do your research and you check what you're buying before you buy it, uh, buy beware, you should find yourself a really good boat, really reliable, uh, which leads into the next point, the safety. Because it's a well-designed, well-built, and hopefully well maintained kayak you know you're going to go out have a good day on the water and come back safely you're not going to have like well, you often hear of uh, inferior brands um, yeah cheaper brands without naming any names they are known to fail and in some cases even sink uh, which isn't too good Hobies will also sink uh, if, <laughs> if they're treated wrong or have faults but uh, so don't just assume they're perfect, but generally speaking, you know you're getting good quality. Another one to consider is resale value. They, they're going to hold their value, even with the faults. I mean, I, I could turn around and sell this and reasonably ex expect to sell this for more than it cost me. Um, not that I'm going to, I have no intention of selling it, but I reckon I could pretty easily get as I said twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for this and uh, when you consider that it cost me less than a thousand although I have put the uh, sounder on since that's um that's not bad bashed it around for three years and make a profit yeah you'd take that wouldn't you and last point I'll make about uh, why it's such a good yak is it's comfortable uh, even with the the old uh, the seat that I, I jokingly said give you seizures, they don't, they're fine. Um, like I said, I put a towel over that just for a bit of added padding and I'll sit on that for, you know, I'll, I'll leave at dawn most days and sometimes I won't come in until, you know, 11, 12 o'clock. And the only, the only discomfort is I'll be absolutely fanging for a, a bit of breakfast. There's, there'll be no, uh, no issues with the, the back, the legs, shoulders, it's all good, it's all fine. Um, some of that is due to the fitness, I am used to being in it. I am used to paddling and pedalling. But uh, if you were to go out and buy one of these and start kayaking, you'd have some sore legs for a while while you got used to the Mirage Drive. But uh, yeah, you wouldn't have any huge uh, back problems or anything like that. So yeah, it is a comfortable boat.
and I'm assuming uh, the newer the newer model you get with the newer seats the better it'll be so I do, like I said I don't use this all the time I use it probably 70% of the time but the 30% that I don't is um, is when I want something lighter and simpler you know sometimes you just don't want <coughs> You don't want to have to set up a battery. You don't want the Mirage drive. You don't want to muck around with all the all the bits and pieces that go with an Outback or any uh, Mirage drive Hobie for that matter. So in those cases, I'll I'll leave this at home. It is quite heavy as well, and I'll go for a lighter option like my Tarpon 120 or even my paddleboard. But uh, yeah, this is the main fishing kayak. And I get a lot of use from it. I do U balls, as you've seen in my videos. I do uh, estuary and inshore type fishing, whiting, tailor, squid, that kind of thing. Nothing too heavy, but these are more than capable. You, any quick search online will show you people catching sailfish, big snapper, all sorts of fish on these. They really are a uh, a very versatile boat. Can't recommend them enough. So there it is guys, there's my uh, battered, bruised and completely abused Hobie Outback. I'll leave you with a few clips of it doing its thing now. Uh, you've all seen them before in my videos, but uh, always nice to see them again. And uh, hope you enjoyed it guys. Any questions about it, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. Oh. My snag? No, that's a fish. Yep, that's a fish. Oh, taking a bit of drag too. Oh yeah, that's a skippy. That's a nice skippy, you beauty. Oh, look at that, I was just setting up, poured myself a coffee and my sleep has gone off again. Definitely all about the squid today. It feels like a whiting. Yep, yeah, there's a whiting. Oh boy, this is a good one. There's a bit of weight here. He's pulling string. Oh, let's get this boy to the boat. Oh, he's a ripper. Let's get a net behind it. I'm going to say 23, 24 centimetre hood on this one. Oh, what a beauty! What a beauty!